Okay. <clears throat> so, the same? No, no, it's the sheet with the uh, the diagram on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's in the four last series. This one. Mm -hmm. Angel, Angel, get out of the sheet. Get the four last things. So, what are the four last things? They are death, judgment, the four. hell, heaven. Death, judgment, heaven, and, covenant. and hell. Oh, other said the four. Oh. Uh, the four last things are death, judgment, heaven, judgment, and hell. All of those things we will face. Uh, <coughs> three of them. That's <laughs> Three of them will apply to all of us, okay? Because you can't be in heaven and hell at the same time. The principle of non-contradiction, the thing cannot be, in, cannot be and not be at the same time under the same circumstances. So you cannot end up in heaven and hell. It's either or. So death, judgment, and either heaven or hell. But those are the four last things. And <clears throat> um, as it says here, we're to talk about the judgment, just a minute. Talk about the judgment. Two judgments we will all undergo. Okay. There is the particular judgment individually. When we die, instantly we're judged. I used to ask the eighth graders, seventh and eighth graders, when I talked to them, what happens when we die? And he used to look at me with blank stares, and then one would sheepishly raise his hand and say, Go to heaven. I said, Well, six of each. I would say not necessarily, and that's not what's going to happen as soon as we die. As soon as we die, we're going to be judged. That's the particular judgment, individual. And if we die in a state of grace, we will get to heaven. We may get, need cleaning up the purgatory, but dying in a state of grace, okay, God's life within us, is what is needed to get to the kingdom. And if someone dies separated from, from God's grace, well, and they're separated for eternity because at death there's no there's no changing because everyone would change of course after death well no I don't want to go to hell I'll I'll take you Lord but no no more choosing good or evil uh, that ends at death that's the particular judgment and as it says here heaven for souls free from all sin and all punishment if you atone for all all sins in this life you'll go straight to heaven that's what we hope okay? Uh, we strive to do that, strive, strive to be saints. And, um, but for most of us, and I include myself in that, okay, purgatory for souls free from all mortal sin, but not having atoned for all venial sins or uh, the punishment from um, either venial sins or, or mortal sins, mortal sins that are forgiven. Remember, there's two types of punishment. That's on the other side of the sheet. Okay? Uh, the other side, it talks about um, temporal punishment and eternal punishment. Eternal punishment is punishment in hell for eternity. If someone commits a mortal sin, that's the punishment that is awaiting them unless they repent. Jesus Christ, his merits will remit the punishment, the eternal punishment, but temporal punishment remains. We have to make up for the bad we've done. Okay? If we've done bad, we've got, to, we've got to make up for that in this life or in purgatory. If we don't, then uh, if we don't in this life, then we have purgatory awaiting us. Okay, so that's the, the particular judgment. Then the general judgment at the end of the world. Okay, and uh, that is after the reunion of all souls with their bodies. Okay? When Jesus comes again to judge the living and the dead at the end of the world, that's it. Every eye will see him. The dead will rise. Everyone who is, has died will rise. Those who are alive in the second coming will either get a glorified body or a body to suffer with, okay? because there will be the separation of the sheep and the goats. Purgatory ends at the second coming of Christ, and the general judgment takes place. And Angel, I know you answered this the other day, so why is there the general judgment? Because everybody needs to know what everybody's done. God's God's justice, okay? the secrets, to quote scripture, the secrets of all hearts will be revealed. Everyone's going to know what everyone has done. We're going to see God's mercy with some of the greatest sinners. They've, they've repented and become saints. And another reason, do you remember the other reason besides God's justice that everyone has to know what everyone has done, 
right? there's another reason for the general judgment, and it is seeing the effects of our oh, actions. Our right? actions. It may point. be all the way to the end of the world, someone's effects, good or bad. Okay? So the effects of everyone's actions, some good or evil that one has done, yes? Are there going to be rankings? Well, there's, there's rankings in a sense because we're going to get to this uh, in, in a moment, okay? There are levels of happiness in heaven and levels of punishment in hell. Yes, because you lead a greater life of sanctity, you attain a higher place in heaven. You receive more joy. That's what we call merit. Okay? God will reward us for the holiness we've lived. And um, the general judgment, as it says here, the end of the world after the reunion of bodies, souls with their bodies, because we have either done good or sinned with our bodies. We're going to spend eternity in bodily form, either in a glorified body, that's what the good get at the end, a body like Jesus has. A glorified body, no pain, no suffering, no hunger, no thirst. There won't be eating or drinking in heaven. And everyone has a body beautiful, perfectly proportioned. Proportion is one of the, the, the uh, principles of, of art. Okay? Something is good proportion, it's beautiful. We will all have bodies beautiful. No more needing to work out or diet or anything. We'll all have perfectly proportioned bodies and well, why do you just look at the women to say that? It's not, not, only, not only the women, it's the guys too. Okay. Yes, that, that's yes. what we. Oh, we, oh, okay, okay. I thought you were looking at Cecilia and saying this. I went this way. Okay, okay, out to the, out to the whole, whole, uh, yeah, Jimmy's uh, like, hot. Hardly <laughs> tell the time model. <laughs> okay, now, now, uh, some people ask, okay, well, what if you die at infancy? What if you die at 105 years old? Are you going to have a body like that for eternity? The answer is no. God will put together our bodies. It will be our bodies. They say the angels will, will gather the actual parts of our bodies that have, that have decayed, okay, put them back together, but in a glorified form. About like a body that Jesus has now in heaven. A body that uh, has agility. It can, it can go from one end of the earth to the other just by thinking of it. Our bodies will not be, be weighed down by, by matter as they are now, in the sense that, that we're slow moving. Our bodies will be uh, immortal. They will be free from all suffering and pain. And uh, there, will, there will be a clarity about them, a brightness about them, because uh, the light of God's life will shine forth in us. And the greater holiness someone has, has achieved, the more beautiful their bodies will be. Uh, and uh, anyway, that's the re Oh, to get to my point, though, in regard to you know, you won't have a body of a baby or someone a hundred and some years old. Uh, most theologians think that the bodies that we will get at the resurrection will be 33 years of age. Did anyone think, yes, when Jesus died, okay? So that's, that's the body Jesus has now in heaven. He rose from the dead with, and that is a body that everyone will have, yes. When you say that there's, like, no eating and drinking in heaven, like, what... Like, isn't like heaven's like the happiest place ever? Mm -hmm. So, what if you just like like to eat? Uh, well, we won't need to eat. But well, can you if you want to? Because don't you get joy from that? Well, but we'll have a greater joy than that. We will have a joy of communion with others. That's what we're made for. God made us to know Him, love Him, serve Him, this life to be happy with Him forever in heaven. And in God, there is complete joy and happiness. There is communion of persons and change of love between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that has taken place for all eternity, we will join in that, that communion of love and life that has been going on for all eternity with God, and we will also share a, a communal life with others. We will, we will communicate with others. Love begets communication. And think of this, you know, billions of angels will get to learn their stories. And uh, billions of individuals, too, will we'll have that, that whole eternity to spend with 
with others to learn about them and, and be, be joyful with them. Um, but our bodies will be, will be part of us because we are body, soul individuals. We are not pure spirits. The angels are pure spirits. We are embodied spirits. We're going to get our bodies back. And those in hell will suffer because they sin through their bodies and they will suffer. Okay. Yes? So all eternity, um, we're going to, there's like all the billions of people and angels and everything. What's going to happen when we know everybody or every angel, every person's like story front and back? Because I mean, eternity, a long time, there's going to be a uh -huh. point where we know uh -huh. It never ends. It never ends. So well, what's going to happen after that? Like, are we going to want more or are we just going to be happy with all the billions of people that we now know completely and angels too? Well, um, it's not only knowing their stories, it's, mm -hmm. it's sharing life with them. I mean, we enjoy people's company mm -hmm. here on Earth. People, people get together, they, they talk, they converse, and we'll be able to do this for eternity. That's, that's, uh, to share in, in conversation with others. And, um, and, but that's, that's one of the incidental joys of heaven. The primary joy is seeing God. And God is infinite goodness and beauty and truth. It will be never-ending joy that we will receive from beholding God and his goodness, his beauty, his truth. It will be never-ending. God will reveal more and more things about him. You will see more and more for eternity. On and on and on. Never-ending. Yes? So, like, you're walking, like, you walk around in heaven and you're like, hey, angel, you want to go look at God for a while? Or do you want to go look at God? <laughs> Like, we will we will see God. Get it. We will see God with our so mind's you... eye. Okay. Okay. We'll see Christ embodied, but we'll see God, who is pure spirit, with our mind's eye. We will behold God, with the goodness and beauty and truth of God. And, and we we can't know. Uh, we can't get too specific about it because, as Isaiah says, and Saint Paul quotes him. Eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what joys await us in the kingdom. So All we know is that we there's going to be great joy that is unimaginable. So there could and, be food and like material things. Well, um, there we we our bodies because they're glorified. Our bodies because they're glorified will not have need of food in heaven. So we think there will will not be food. That will not be one of the things that we will need to, to do in heaven, or even take enjoyment from, because it's, it's something that was only necessary here on earth. Okay. So like so, you a hobby or Well, something. if you have hobbies, oh, maybe you can, you can If you have hobbies, I mean, we can, we can yeah. if that brings us joy in heaven, why not? I mean, it's, it's a kind of left to the imagination. We don't really know what's on the other side, exactly. other, than, other than that we will be filled with with a joy that is never ending. Angel, yes. So does this mean when we get to heaven, we'll be able to use a hundred percent of our brain's capacity? Yes, I imagine. So does that mean we'll be able to move stuff with our mind? <laughs> uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I have uh, here a little, a little. I, I passed out this on, on did I pass it on heaven already? Yeah. Um, okay. I just, 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 just the one on hell. Wait, did I ask this already? Like when um, we say like we suffer in purgatory because we're not with Christ because we want to be. Yes. It's the same suffering that it's on earth because we're not with Christ either now. So is it more hey, hey, or Why? Someone's talking and asking questions. So what is, what is it that you're asking again? Yeah, you know what you're yeah, I do. Oh. So, like, when you're in, they say we, we suffer when we're in purgatory because we're not with Christ and we want to be. But is it the same type of suffering here because we're not with Christ here and we're su like we're suffering on earth? So, is it more or less suffering, or is it like the same in purgatory? Suffering is is greatly increased in purgatory. Yes, it is it is much more intense, and and the the pain of the loss is experienced more intensely as well because we, we do not have the presence of God with us and that is what we long for. That's the most painful thing, okay? To be separated from God and and uh, but 
in purgatory, people have something that they don't have in hell, and that is hope. They hope that they will see God, and they know that they will see God one day. They're assured of this. Okay? There's no doubt that they, they realize that their atonement for their sins is temporary, temporal punishment, okay? temporary, only time. Okay? Why is punishment necessary for sin? Who taught us that? Christ. Okay? Christ suffered for sins. He was the innocent lamb. So we're not going to get off scot-free. Oh, just you know, float up to heaven because, uh, because we're, we're believers. No. Okay. Jim, yes. Um, so say like you, um, you go to confession and stuff and you're all good, and then you like tell someone to kill you, and then you die, do you go to heaven or what? Well, you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't do that because that would be sinful to tell someone to kill you. That would um, be like... We cannot take our own lives, okay? What if you um, but, wait, okay, so we, we cannot take our own lives, but um, if someone if someone you know goes to confession and 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 um, and is really stro striven to make a um, atonement for their sins in this life, and and they die with, without any any punishment awaiting them uh, necessary, they they atone for everything. They will go straight to heaven, and. Um, it, it gives great assurance to be going to confession regularly. I'll tell a little story okay, about uh, my brother's friend. And um, um, you have um, the little handout on hell. Okay? Hell. And hell. Um, this little article here talks about the, in the first full paragraph there, uh, pain of loss and pain of sense. You could underline those because you have to know that. Okay, the pain of loss means because they've turned away from God, they will be deprived of the beatific vision, the vision of God. They will never see God. That's the pain of loss, more painful than the pain of sense, which is the positive pain inflicted on the man. The positive pain inflicted on the damned by um, some instrument of torture. Uh, it's the fires of hell. Jesus reveals this. Uh, there, there's fire in hell. And when they get their bodies back, and those who are suffering, they will uh, experience that pain of sense, but the pain of loss will be greater. Okay? And um, Christ mentions both of these. Okay, See the quote there from Matthew. This is at the separation of the sheep and the goats in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. Depart from me, ye accursed, into the everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. So uh, we know that um, hell is everlasting and that it is fire, that there is a, a pain of sense because there was a fire there, okay? But then there's the pain of loss as well. And it, it goes through a number of uh, scripture references to the unending torture of hell is proclaimed in other books, okay? Chapter 66 of Isaiah, the worm shall not die and the fire shall not be quenched. The worm of conscience, someone will know from all eternity, for all eternity, all the graces that God gave them, the opportunities to repent and that they've rejected these. And, um, and uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there are other scripture quotes there near the, the bottom uh, before the last paragraph, the Apocalypse, the Book of Revelation. Okay? The smoke of their torments shall ascend up forever and ever. Neither shall they have rest day or night who have adored the beast. Okay? Um, and um, on the right-hand column, the first full paragraph, the magisterium of the church, they've issued several pronouncements on the, on the eternity of hell over the years because people said, well, is it really eternal and, and maybe it's only temporary? Well, no. The magisterium, interpreting the scriptures in Jesus' words, has, has uh, defined without and leaving no doubt that, that there is an eternity in hell, of hell. And um, uh, then, as it says in, from uh, the council the fourth council of the Lateran, all will rise with their own bodies, which they now have, 
that they may receive good or bad according to their works. The evil will go with the devil to perpetual punishment. The just will go to everlasting glory. And then 1336, Pope Benedict the Twelfth, we define, according to the general decree of God, the souls of those who die in an actual state of mortal sin, soon after death descend into hell, where they are tormented by the pains of hell. Well, um, so we, we have these statements from the magisterium on hell, and um, uh, here is just a little, another little catechesis on it as well. Uh, oh, uh, has anyone heard of Dante? Dante Inferno. Dante, well, Dante, the, um, the Divine Comedy. Okay, he's he's he speaks of not only hell, but there is purgatory. Purgatorio. It's two sheets. Okay. It's two sheets. Yeah. It's, two sheets. it's purgatorio, uh, paradiso. And um, the inferno. Okay. Well, on the on the top of the sheet here, hell. Um, most most famous work ever written is that because most people know it, the inferno, part of a three volume work, the Divina Commedia. Uh, Infer inferno, Purgatorio, Paradiso, by Dante Alighieri. And, um, so, uh, on the gates of hell, see that in bold. That's what Dante said. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here, because you have no hope. That's, that's the most horrible thing. Okay? Uh, that you will never see God. And God does not create punishments, impose them on people. He doesn't need to. Evil is its own punishment. God, in a sense, God doesn't send people to hell, though he wills what is just. Okay? They go to hell because they want to. It sounds strange. Why would someone want to go to hell, well, uh, there's something they prefer to God. They love sin more than God. Their, the will is fixed after death, you see. So if someone's will is fixed to, to have turned away from God, uh, well then, that will is fixed for eternity. They love themselves and their sins more than God. And in the bold there, um, well, in a sense, you know, what, if someone dies in a state separated from God in unrepentant mortal sin, you know, God says, to hell with you. So, I mean, literally. And, and the person cannot look at God because they are they're, they're, they're turned in on themselves with their, their own disordered love for themselves and their own sins. Now, have you ever met someone who has an aversion to holy things. You know, they don't want to. Don't talk to me about, about God, about heaven. Okay. Yeah. I've, 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 I have relatives that you know are like this. You know, don't don't tell me about these things. Well, uh, if their will is fixed like that at death, well, you know, God isn't going to say, well, I'm going to change your will and to make you love me. You know, their, their, their will is fixed for eternity. And uh, those who love sin and perseverance in unrepentant until death, this is what happens. This is why they're separated. So in a sense, someone sends themselves to hell by the way they've lived their lives and by the way their will is fixed in attachment to self at death. Now, um, as it says here, the church is consistently taught if you commit a mortal sin, you persist to this, until the state of death. Unrepentant, you die, you go to hell. Okay, that's, that's the defined dogma. The essence of the pains of hell of sense and the flames, okay? And there are levels of degree of suffering in hell. You see, I have written there in my handwriting, the rich man and Lazarus. You know the story of the rich man and Lazarus? The, the, um, the rich man wasn't mean to Lazarus, he just ignored him. And in the gospel, Jesus tells us that the, the rich man's dogs would eat the food that fell off his table. He didn't give any to Lazarus. And Lazarus dies, he goes to Abraham's bosom um, for the gates of heaven are open, that's what it's called, the place of the limbo of the just. Okay? And, um, and then the rich man dies. And the rich man calls up to Abraham and says, just, if you can dip 
your finger in water. Give me one drop of water. What does Abraham say? I can't. There's an abyss between you and us. And so we can't bridge this gap. And then the rich man makes a request of Abraham. Does anyone remember the story? What does he request? What does he request? Tell his brothers. Tell his, my brothers to stop leading the bad lives they're leading. And Abraham says, no. They have Moses and the prophets. And um, then the rich man says, well, if someone would be raised from the dead, and he says, no, even if someone were raised from the dead, they still wouldn't believe. Well, he was making a reference to Christ there, who would rise from the dead. And um, St. Teresa of Avila, she's a doctor of the church, she has an interesting commentary on that gospel uh, account of Christ. We think it may be a real one, not a parable, because he was talking, he didn't say this is a parable. Um, St. Teresa of Avila says the rich man was not concerned about his brothers. He didn't make that request because he was concerned about his brothers ending up in hell. Because in hell, you cannot have any love or concern for anyone else. Hell is total isolation. Heaven is communion with others. Hell is total isolation. You're, you're off isolated from everyone in a dark pit of, of nothingness, and that's that's another horror of hell. So, you so, so you have a question, please remain. Yeah, I'm speaking. Okay, just wait. Um, Saint Teresa of Avila said the rich man made this request because he knew that his bad example was going to cause his brothers likely to end up in hell, which would mean that his suffering would be increased because. There are levels of punishment in hell. The more evil you do in this life and the more evil your example sets or the effects of your own evil lead others to hell, your suffering will be exacerbated. It will be increased. And that's why the rich man made that request, for selfish reasons. He knew that his punishment would be increased if his brothers end up in hell. So he says, oh, send them to, you know, to tell, tell them you know, to change their lives. Well, not because he was concerned about them. You can't have love or concern about anyone in hell. Yes? Uh, so you won't see anyone else suffering in hell? It'll no. just be you alone? You will be, that's the isolation of hell, yes. And then, like, will you have, like, that knowledge, like, all that knowledge you get when you die? You get that if you go to hell? We will know for as, as the quote said in, in this article, the worm dieth not, okay? The worm of our conscience, someone, someone's conscience will, will be uh, eating at them for all eternity. You know, God gave me so many opportunities to repent and I blew it, I rejected it, okay? God wills that all be saved, okay? That every person be saved. And this is a doctrine of the church, actually a dogma of the church, everyone gets sufficient grace to be saved. Every person gets grace sufficient to be saved, but we have something called a free will, and we can turn our backs on that grace and reject that grace. So, uh, but the pain of loss, okay, um, that separation from God, depart from me, you evildoers, into the everlasting flames. And as, as I was saying Friday, or last week before we broke, okay, I think it's harder to believe in the eternity of hell than to believe in the eternity of heaven. Because it's, there's a sense, well, come on, you know, after a time, you just... No, enough suffering is enough. But no, this is this is a revealed dogma. Christ revealed this. Okay? And that's what we must believe in. As, as painful as this is to believe that some people are going to be lost forever, the devil is and, and, and is called angels. So uh, we, have, we have about one minute. Okay? Um, What's a the, Pardon me? What's a Simonist? A, a simon, simony is selling... Uh, holy things, okay? Uh, uh, selling uh, items that have been blessed, uh, selling blessings, okay? As a priest, I can't, I can't sell sacraments. Okay? Usually, people make a donation to the church, if, if you know, for a baptism or something. But I, I always tell people, this is a donation to the church. I don't accept anything. Sacraments are free. Okay? If you're selling sacraments, if you're selling blessings, that's simony. You know where that comes from, anyone? comes from Simon Magus in the New Testament. He was the first magician, 
Okay? He, he saw Peter and the apostles uh, raising people from the dead. He said, give me this power. I, I want to have this. Uh, I'll, I'll pay you for it. And he offered them money. See, that's where the term simony comes from. Offered money to get you know, the power to administer sacraments. And you know, it was, and we don't do that. Yes. I mean, you can sell, like, or is it a sin to sell, like, a crucifix or a rosary or a necklace of Jesus? Uh, not a blessed one. You can't sell a blessed item. Once it's blessed, it's a sacramental. You can't sell it then. If it's unblessed, you may sell it. That's why people bring me items. They buy them, they bring them. I will bless them. Once it's blessed, it's a sacramental. You can't sell that item. Okay. Can you give it to someone now? You can give it to someone, sure. Okay. Let us stand and make the, pray the Angelus, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. According to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, is made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then on that front page of my typewritten document on hell, you'll see under the bold hell is eternal loss of friendship. You see, heaven is communion okay, with God, with others. Hell is the soul's aloneness, existential aloneness. Why did God make Eve? Because Adam experienced this existential solitude, okay? It's not good for man to be alone. Well, uh, you may be surrounded by people in hell, but you're still alone. And everyone hates everyone else. They're angry, embittered souls. They will blame everyone else for their misery. If we were not, if it were not for my rotten parents, my rotten spouse, my rotten love, so on and so on, okay? Uh, the other side, they will blame God for their wretched condition. But deep down, they will know it is their own fault for all eternity. See, Jesus says in hell, the worm dieth not, the worm of conscience. Okay. So if you offer the damned the opportunity to go to heaven, they would not. They would not. This is the essence of their damnation. damnation. They're not interested in the things of God or holiness. Their attitude towards sin is not repentance. But rather, I did it and I'm glad, and I will do it again. Satan would rather serve in hell, can reign in hell, than serve in heaven. That's this classic uh, statement we find in Isaiah, non servium I will not serve. I'll reign in hell rather than serve in heaven. C.S. Lewis, um, in um, the, the screw tape letters, anyone ever read the screw tape letters about the, the demons that tempt? Okay. Um, he portrays uh, the demons as, as devouring others in hell, almost eating them, eating the souls, okay? uh, munching on them, so to speak, uh, uh, torturing them, okay? uh, in a sense, and getting perverse joy out of this. And C.S. Lewis says that in the end, there are only two kinds of people, those who say to God, your will be done, and those who say to God and everyone else, my will be done. Either you give in, let God have his way. Doesn't mean you are always happy with it. Okay. Um, Father Reese isn't always happy with his suffering. He's in, pray for him, he's in India right now. He's undergoing his stem cell therapy. We hope he, he benefits from it. But he's just accepting God's will. He says, God wills this. No, I'm not, I'll just accept God's will. Okay. Doesn't mean you find it easy, but you let God have his way. Thy will be done, your will be done, God. Or else you say, I want what I want, and if you don't like it, too bad. I don't really care if God doesn't like it. I want what I want. My will is all that matters to me. Okay? 
Well, this is, uh, again, the Satanic Bible. My will be done. That's, 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 that's Satanism. Okay? My will be done. That's the first line, I think, of the Satanic Bible. Alice Crowley, okay? God will say to the damned, Thy will be done. I think you're late. And either you want God or yourself. You call Pascal's wager, okay? Okay? It's better to wager on God that there was a God you, you may pass up a few uh, uh, sinful pleasures in this life, but uh, I think if you're, if you're reasonable, you should uh, be willing to bet on God. And here's God's justice. Whichever you want, you get. If what you want is God, that's what you'll get. If what you want is yourself, that is what you will get. And that is hell. Therein lies aloneness, total isolation. Imagine being surrounded by people only interested in themselves. Oh my goodness. Yeah, instead of interested in others. And uh, C.S. Lewis, the, the damned souls are, in one sense, successful rebels to the end. The doors of hell are locked on the inside. And Jesus says, enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and easy that leads to destruction. Those who enter it are many. The gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. Those who find it are few. Now, that doesn't sound to me like you know, most, almost everyone's going to be going to heaven, or everyone's going to heaven. That's even worse to say that. Okay? Uh, some people say, well, God is so good and merciful, he would never send anyone to hell. Well, God, God will allow people to, uh, to follow their own will, and, and their will be done. That's why we have a free will. So... It's a demonic deception to just to think that uh, there is no hell. Dante's Inferno. Before I talk about that, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a little story because it's it's uh, kind of a funny one. Um, my brother had friends in high school. My mother used to read books on saints all the time. That's one of the reasons I think I'm a saint. I'm a priest. Okay, I'm trying to be a saint. So. Um, she read St. Teresa of Avila, Doctor of the Church. St. Teresa of Avila, uh, my mother was telling my brother and his friends, they, they were in high school, I think they were seniors in high school, and um, my, my brother's friends were over, they were sitting around, like, you know, drink, having a, you know, some, some soda or something one day in the summer. My mother was telling them about St. Teresa of Avila. St. Teresa of Avila uh, was given a vision of all the souls that died in the world one day. She said, the souls that went to hell fell like snowflakes. And in her whole life, she said she only saw five people go straight to heaven. Most people who were going to heaven went to purgatory. Okay? But she said, she, all the souls in the world, one day she saw, and the souls that, the souls that went to hell fell like snowflakes. So um, my brother, he's walking into church uh, about two days later, and he sees... I don't think he'll, he'll mind it if you're watching. If you watch this gym, uh, I'll, I'll use your example because you know that I've used this before. Okay. Jim Johnson. Jim Johnson's walking into church. My brother says to him, Jimmy, I haven't seen you in church in months, years. What gives? You know what he said? Snowflakes. Snowflakes. I'm worried. I'm going to get back to Mass. Now, fast forward about... 25 years. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Johnson, is uh, an electrician. He does work for the city sometimes. He was down in the deep tunnel in Chicago. Uh, deep tunnel is the, the uh, to, to prevent flooding. Okay, they they flush out the water in the deep tunnel. I was down there actually. I was in law school. Uh, an engineer was in law school uh, with me, and he took me down to the deep tunnel. He worked down it. Well, Jim Johnson was down there. They, drained it of water because they had to do some electrical work down there for some reason. And then uh, the water was scheduled, I think, to go back on at a certain time, and the elevator wouldn't, wouldn't bring them back up. They were afraid, really started to panic that they were going to die down in the deep tunnel because when the water comes, I mean, you're, you know, there, there's nothing else to do. Well, they ended up getting out some way, finally calling someone. They had to crawl through something and find some other way up. I forget what it was. Jimmy, it was his first time down in the deep tunnel, and he was cool as a cucumber. And these guys who had worked down there all the time, well, they were panicking, and they were 
oh my gosh, you know, we're going to die down here. And Jimmy's like, well, here, I'll help you guys, okay, this is how we get out. And, and after they got out, uh, they all said to him, well, why were you so calm down here? Brian Torres, please come to the main office at the bell. Brian Torres, come to the main office at the bell. And Jimmy said, because I'm clean. He says, guys, I went to confession just like three days ago, Saturday. I'm not worried about dying. Have you guys been to confession lately? This is maybe why you're worried about dying, huh? So, uh, good story about Jimmy Johnson, okay?